fucking purple and these yellow bastards are going down. Welcome to another episode of 72 Pink Connector. With us this week, we have Tom, Sup, and Adam. Hi! Uh, Josh is not going to be with us this week. He's currently celebrating the birthday of his wife, so they are having a grand old time doing whatever that is they're doing. Fired. Probably better than this, to be honest. Being fired. Hey, man, don't be hating on this. This <laughs> is a badass time. Yeah, no, it's, it's pretty sweet. And Josh is not fired. We love Josh. Enjoy. <laughs> How was your guys' week? Good. Exhausting. Well, actually, exhausting. O- only today, though. The last 12 hours have been exhausting, <laughs> but. What'd you do? Went do for I a know? hike up a mountain. Nice. There's this lake out in the mountain that I'm trying to scout out, and as well, it's just beautiful. So, um, Gina and I went to go see it, and it was beautiful. However, they list this thing as moderate, and um, the trail. The trail mm-hmm. got kind of rough. Yeah. The trail got really rough. <laughs> Me with long legs, it worked out a little better. But if you didn't have right. long legs, some of that stuff would be really hard. Huh. I mean, there was rocks like the size of my waist you had to climb over. Oh, nice. Uh, that sounds yeah. like a lot of fun. It was beautiful, though. You like get to the top of this mountain. You just like peek over and then bam, here's this pristine lake <laughs> like from... <laughs> 300 400 yards away i'm able to see through the water and see the rocks underneath just gorgeous nice so the next time i'm there i'm fishing that some bitch <laughs> are, are there fish on mountain lakes so uh they stock them actually oh i thought the fish would climb the, the mountain get the lake <laughs> like i thought they would like bring their little fish backpacks and yeah yeah Okay, for audio people, <laughs> this is the death. This is the death <laughs> stare. <laughs> that is, yeah, yeah. There's, I, I can confirm there is a a large amount. That of That is the look of a stare. man that's tired of your shit. <laughs> uh, but um, they uh, the uh, plane stock. They'll um use airplanes and helicopters and all that kind of stuff and stock into high altitude lakes. They'll literally I'm just, just imagining drop like a, thousands I'm of just, fish. I'm <laughs> just imagining like those crop duster planes, but it's just like a sea, just like this giant. <laughs> cloud of fish falling from the sky it's battlegrounds of fish <laughs> oh, there's Jesus. like 20 different species in there and whichever one eats the others first <laughs> is the one who wins the lake so so speaking of battlegrounds um i was up so late last night playing splatoon 2 and speaking no, of battlegrounds i was gonna say where's the reference <laughs> it's, here? It's, it's getting there splatoon it's getting there two. Um, so right. I spent all night playing Splatoon 2 and I was, I was like falling asleep on the couch. I'm like, all right, fine. I'll, I'll fucking go to bed. I'll give up. Cause I'm a weak willed man. And I went to bed. <laughs> Pussy. I had dreams all night of battlegrounds, not of Splatoon. <laughs> I had dreams that I was trapped in battlegrounds. You know, dreaming oh of being in battlegrounds would be terrifying. So I yeah, thought that, that too. Be- I was hiding under a bed the entire dream. Except like to spot cars coming. Renee killed like six people. So nice. so my wife, my so wife. So what is, do you really think of your wife? Oh, so <laughs> for for the, the listeners, my wife probably wouldn't kill anything if she had the option. She's she's more of a, a flee or, or fly than fight type person. Um but yeah, no, she like totally shot a bunch of people in the head and then like went after some dude with a machete. Like it was just no fucking business. <laughs> I'm just picturing your wife in real life just like chopping someone down with a machete. Oh, she And like the blood splattering <laughs> up. She got into it. Like like that Rick and Morty episode about repressed rage. She was like fucking into it. It was kind of terrifying. She does live with you. There probably is a good bit of repressed rage. That's that's very true. That's very true. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, battlegrounds and living in battlegrounds. Yeah. It's and, a good um, time. Uh, Souls points out something in this dream. Were you unable to jump over walls or actually <laughs> go through things properly? No, I was too afraid to leave the house without, you know, basically one half of it was blown off like the the houses with the front missing. So you can totally see into them. We were in one of those houses, but I was too much of a wimp to like run to a better one did you open any doors without your hand actually touching the doorknob no no i i did i did have issues going prone next to a dresser though ah yeah <laughs> yeah issues actually laying down at first yeah, exactly but did i, you I made accidentally it. press x and unequip your weapon I, I did i did it was really bad you were shoeless right oh yeah of course of course <laughs> always okay we went down that rabbit hole <laughs> yeah what about did you, you did adam you do- 
Did either of you guys play Battlegrounds this week? No. Um, this might I, be the first week I haven't played at all. I did some because I was listening to a lot of other people who do podcasts, and um, they've said something that's really helped them, and I'm starting to do. It's, hmm. you know, I think everyone does this at first when they play, well, most people, is you hear shots. Your objective at that point is, I don't want to go close to those. Where these guys, their whole idea is, you fight so little in this game that whenever it comes to fighting, you're under, you're just not used to it. He's like, so what they started doing is seeking out the shots, seeking out the action. Mm. And then A, they got better. And B, look at the looting situation this way. You can run around for 15 minutes getting the best of the loot in five clusters of houses. Or you can kill the guy that just looted all those houses and aggregated all the good loot for you. So I was, I was watching some stream where some guy chicken dinner like three times on stream. Um, and, <laughs> wow. and by the way, somebody like kept donating 50 bit or 5,000 bits at a time, which I believe is $50. So this, <sighs> this one fan threw like 200 bucks this guy's his way every time he, he you know, won or killed someone. Um, do you, which was do you remember nuts. who it was? Yeah, we need to get him to follow. <laughs> Lyric? I, I think it was Lyric. Lyric, oh. So, like, he was he was just kicking ass, but they would run up to anyone they saw and then just go nuts trying to kill them. They ran towards the action all the time. There was, like, the only time when they played remotely stealthily was when it came down to the last, you know, two circles where everyone was bunched together. Yeah, yeah, at that point, it's more of a, okay, let everyone kind of expose themselves. Yeah, yeah, it was, it's a waiting game at that point. But no, during the cast, like... Get in your motorcycle, get your pistol in your pan, and just go nuts. <laughs> it was it was a it was a good cast to watch. Um, speaking of pans, um, there was a clip in our Discord of a pan saving someone's ass. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, um, huge erection, proto tricks, however you know him as. Um, he had a hell of an ending of a game that he posted in our Discord. If anyone had, or for all, I mean, we have the link there. Everyone can go check it out. Uh, where he just went apeshit with an SKS. He ended up getting like five or six kills. He was running through the last circle and all of a sudden you just hear a ding. It's like, oh shit. <laughs> so that's so such is a it, satisfying sound. Is it meta to like run towards someone, jump up, and then do a 360 so your pan has a chance to block? No, it's meta to <laughs> equip no. the pan and run at them. <laughs> Swing, I, swing the bullets away. I did see what was it? It's it's a common clip on on the uh, player unknown battlegrounds Reddit or subreddit, mm -hmm. um, where some guy was getting shot at with an SMG, and this person uploaded like unloaded an entire clip at them, and the guy just ran at them with a pan and took them out in one shot. <laughs> it's like so and so died by headshot from pan. Oh Jesus! Oh, that's incredible. Well, I will say, don't fuck with that. Have any of you guys ever <laughs> lifted up a cast iron skillet? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can one I, one shot to the head should take you out. Like if <laughs> if I'm going to get hit with any cookware, including like blenders or big ass mixers, those would be you know mm. I, I would be more happy to get hit with those than a cast iron anything. Yeah. Give me. Yeah, a, I think so. Give me one of those nice silicone frying pans to the head all day over a cast iron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all day. Easy. Easy. You see, you see this, this is what the, the horrible military leaders of the world need to do. Like, you know, they bring out car batteries or other torture devices. Somebody comes out with a cast iron pan. You're just like, oh shit, I will tell you anything. <laughs> like, here's my social, here's my date of birth. And here's the guy who killed your mother. Go, <laughs> go, go get him. Go get him. Just, just please put the pan down. <laughs> Unless you're cooking something nice and tasty. Mm, pancake cakes. <laughs> Love them. Mm. Uh, so how was your week, Adam? I mean, I not had a too bad. Show. I don't really have a whole lot to share, to be honest. It's just been kind of a, a normal week. No goo food or anything. Goo food. Goo food. No goo food. Ooh, all the goo food. No, no, I didn't really even yeah. eat anything. Wow. Well, you, you, you ate stuff, right? I mean, I you did. ate? Yeah, no. like you're not no, starving, no. right? No, I'm on a uh, seven-day fast. I'm going to eat Jesus. tomorrow. All right. <laughs> well, okay, as, long as, as long as you do it safely. <laughs> um, yeah, we actually went to that place Tom was talking about last week. It's pretty solid. Um, oh, that Mongolian? Yeah, it's, it's good. Um, if you're in the area, I would say go do it. Once you do it once or twice, I would... Eh, 
the actual flavor and stuff was okay. It's not the best, but it's pretty it. good. I loved it. Um, and we also did an escape room. Um, oh, nice. Which was really interesting. Um, it's most escape rooms I've done. It's been solve one thing. It kind of exposes a couple others and do a little this, mm-hmm. that. This one was literally just paralyze yourself or paralyze, um, <gasps> paralyze, uh, bah. Paraly- parallelize yourself. Yes. Thank parallelize. you. So like everyone just goes <laughs> off and <laughs> solves their own puzzles. And then that's how that one worked. It was a little weird. When okay. Did that. Huh? Yeah. I, I didn't hate this escape room. They did some cool stuff. Like there was, uh, like pieces of treasure that you would sit on a spot in the table and it had, uh, RFID, um, I guess stickers or something. It, it was basically they were RFID enabled pieces of treasure. So when you put it on the table, there's a projector and an image shows up and it was, it was a cool little gimmick, but literally the entire escape room was a room and nothing weird actually happened. It was literally you're solving puzzles that were on wooden boxes. You open the box and you, you get an answer and you repeat that. What was it? 10 times to win the game. Yeah. And then hmm. you use RFID tokens to go through a lo- another, another little challenge thing. It, it wasn't bad. I, I didn't regret going, but it was definitely the bottom tier of escape rooms that I've been to. Yeah. On most of the time in escape room, I like how the puzzles feel together. Yeah. Like one thing helps you solve another, helps you solve another, where everyone in the room is working together to try to figure out stuff. And there was no environmental puzzles. When I go to an escape room, I want a room where I have to pull shit off of the walls or, you know, you know, <laughs> well, no. Well, the, hang on. The, the crazy shit that's <laughs> not the real. Time we, the time we went to an escape room, they specifically said, <laughs> don't pull shit off the walls. So Nothing I try and gets to- pulled off the walls. Yeah. Don't try to pull anything off the walls. You will damage this room. See, clearly they were doing <laughs> that just just to keep and us you, in the puzzle for longer, so we lost. So I tried to pull everything <laughs> off the walls, and you still tried to pull things off the walls. I'm like, yeah. I was like, no, nothing comes off the walls. <laughs> so there was uh, there was a, a one escape room that I did in Tennessee where you actually had to redirect a laser using mirrors into like uh, some sort of light sensor to get a door or drawer or something to open. It really fucking cool stuff. Uh, this one, it's. You know, like if you look up on like on a website, you know, top 10 hardest puzzles that are really arbitrary and don't mean anything. They could have pasted <laughs> that on the sides of these boxes and it, that would have been the whole room. It, it wasn't bad, but I do not feel like I got the the money we put into it at all. Yeah, uh, it is what it is. You, you win some, you lose some. And we yeah. lost. <laughs> so wah, wah. that was sad. So yep. we came home and gamed. That said, Adam, yeah, have you been playing much of anything this week? So I, I haven't played a lot as far as time. So I haven't gotten really heavy into anything lately. But I did play some things, and I played something I don't know that I've talked about on this cast before. But we'll start with the easy ones, uh, Rocket League. I've been playing uh, ranked 1v1s a lot, actually, and I solo standard. Those for the purpose of the season rewards so i've gotten that up to the diamond rewards so far so Hmm. i'm making some progress there yeah i'm um, about to start i got to finish gold is where i'm at Hmm. um and then Um. last week we did this this was a lot of fun actually on on the the community cast last week we played quiplash 2 yes part of the jackbox party pack and I, I, fantastic. I didn't expect it to be that much fun. I mean, I expected to have fun with that, definitely. But I did not expect yeah, the hilarity was... of what was last Saturday evening. Yes, so that was, that was a fuck ton of fun. And I'm going to yes. use this to um, just go ahead and say to everyone, this week's game, we tweeted out late. We're going to start trying to tweet this out on Wednesday to give people time. But this week, we are going to play Mount Your Friends. Uh, immediately following the cast, Adam is going to uh, start that up. So everyone come in, enjoy, play with us, jump in the discord, mount us. 
Just have fun with us. <laughs> Jump on mount us, us to mount us, your dominance. have fun with us. Yeah, just come in, <laughs> hang out. Even if you don't have the Pet game, us, um, cuddle us. We have take a, us out to dinner. We have a couple extra <laughs> copies. I think we might be able to throw out if some people need the game to jump in with us, have some fun. For, so throw something on Netflix, not watch it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, Netflix and chill with us. It'll be great. Netflix and chill with Sean, <laughs> Tom. It'll be great. Yeah, it'll be. It'll I want to start a weekly Netflix and chilly night. Netflix oh and chill. Oh my god. Yeah. I would fly back to Ohio weekly. You just for pop that. on a movie, eat some delicious chili. You see, my problem with chili is the last time I tried to make it, it tasted like ketchup with some meaty bits in it. Well, Tom, you have to put more know. than hamburger and ketchup in a crock pot to be chili. <laughs> I thought that was it. Like like I added a oh pinch god. of cayenne. <laughs> That's all you need for chili. There's Come on, Tom. You're you're a binging with Babish fan. There's a there's a chili recipe on there. Just follow that. I, I should recreate that. And in a big shout out to binging with Babish. If you want to see the most delicious food YouTube has ever had to offer, holy shit, that man can cook. Yes. Also, Ratatat plays in the background, which is just a bonus. <laughs> not anymore. Oh, but, yeah. not anymore. Damn. No, then, then he he can't monetize it unless it's uh whatever. Oh, that's true. Royal that's true. Free music. Yeah, so the new ones are different, but still, but yes. channel. as Adam said, though, Whiplash 2 was a fucking blast. It possibly it, actually it was. It was our most popular stream that we've ever had. Yeah, yes. actually, um, people seem to love it. Um, we will be coming back to Jackbox for some future ones of these. So just stay posted on what we're doing and tweet us all the suggestions of what you want to play. And if you're yeah, in the audience, if you're watching, you don't like the audience can actually participate. We had several moments cause you're, you're all mm -hmm. voting mm -hmm. on the funniest thing on the funniest quip. It's, um, it's a lot like cards against humanity. Yeah. But way. the, the audience gets votes as well. So we had the audience, like everyone else would vote one way and the audience would be like, no, fuck you. It's going to be this way. And the audience swung the entire vote. So even if you're not directly, you know, a named player in the game, you can actually influence the game pretty significantly. Yes. And um, whenever we do TKO from Jackbox, it is the exact same. Except you're making T-shirts. And the community or the uh, audience will get to vote. They'll have more downtime, but they'll still get to vote. Yep. Jackbox Party Pack, shout out. Fucking fantastic stuff. Keep it's it wonderful. up. wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Um, so there's actually a little bit of news, if you didn't see that. Uh, Jackbox Party Pack 3 on the Switch sold well enough that they're actually going to port 1 and 2. In typical Nintendo oh, cool. platform fashion, yes. if the current stuff works really well, let's make more money by selling you old shit. You probably won't play more. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so if you need more Jackbox, uh, more will be on the way. Nice. God, I hate I hate how Nintendo does. So I can alternate things. between that and Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> the games that'll never go away. Yeah. So did you guys see Skyrim's coming to the Super Nintendo? <laughs> it's going to have downloadable, like paid DLC and downloadable <laughs> mods. It'll be great. Is that after they port okay. it to the PS7? All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's going to be a PSP version of Skyrim. Yes. <laughs> For those six people who own a PSP. I was about to say how many. Well, actually, uh, PSP was kind of popular for people who would uh, install ROMs on it. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, was, I, had, I had a buddy in high school. That, I had a buddy in high school that always had one in and it had like every Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis game on it. They were weird, though, because uh, my buddy uh, broke his for that. I mean, like not physically broke it, but allowed it to mm -hmm. be hacked. And he, you had to like short circuit the battery. Yep. Which oh. was one of the scariest things I've ever had to do in my life. Cause like, if that goes wrong, your PSP is fucked. Yeah. <laughs> I but, think, yeah. um, I actually think the, what, what's the newer one? The PS Vita Vita. Yes. Oh, did you just call that the new one? No, the newest one. Okay, okay, okay. It's the newest Sony handheld of, it, of the many. It but, was the Switch uh, prototype. I've actually, I haven't owned any, but I've heard that the the Sony handhelds are actually really, really nice. They they've just didn't catch hardware. on. Yeah, they've got good hardware. The issue is, um, so because it's Sony, they're beautiful. They're wonders to control and feel and look at. I mean, the PSP was is still one of the most beautiful handhelds ever created. They were pricey, and they have seven mm. games on them. And, and it's yeah. like the PSP is a true testament to the idea that 
uh, you know, specs don't sell a system, games sell a system. So the PSP yeah. got absolutely destroyed by, you know, the Game Boy Advance and the DS at that time because, you know, well, I don't know, it's almost as powerful as a Nintendo 64, but it's got Mario, so it sells better. As well yeah. as the, <laughs> the Vita, it was a lot of the promise of the Switch with take your games, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The problem is they were trying to sell it as a uh, home console on the go and it didn't have the horsepower for it. Yep. And people buying it weren't initially buying it for an indie machine, which is what it is now turned into. Because mm -hmm. the indie devs flocked to that platform. Yeah, they did. Like, There's a lot of good indie games that came out on the PSP and PS Vita that, um, you know, thankfully, some of the bigger ones are now flocking over to the PS4. Uh, but it's, it's kind of sad that they started and died there because some of those games mm -hmm. were pretty good. Well, you could play a lot of PS4 games on the Vita, too, with the remote play thing. Yes. Yes, you can. And that, that's a huge feature. I wish someone else would do that. Like, you could plug something into a, a television and, and play it or, or take it on the go. It would be really nice yeah, if only, some only big... you could just take it off, like a dock, like some sort of yeah. docking station. And like, like and the you controllers? you just take it off the dock. Like so controllers that you could remove and put on at will. But it's key. The dock has to have sharp corners to where you scratch your plastic screen when you pull it out. So you have to buy a third party <laughs> screen protector. If someone yeah. would make a system like that, I'm sure you and I at least would buy them very quickly after launch, even though yes. there's five games available. And Adam would say that it sounds cool, but probably not quite get it yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that sounds like it would be something that would happen in, in some alternate universe. But when that and if that system ever releases, you'll hear about it here first on the 72 pin <laughs> connector podcast. Uh, oh, God. So back to um, where that really, really went off the rails at. Yeah. Um, what yeah. else have you been up to? Adam? Games. Yeah, I've been playing <laughs> some games. games. Wow. Yeah. How in the um, fuck did I'm we end up there? <laughs> <laughs> um, back. I've been very, very, very very slowly moving through hollow Knight. i played a little bit more of that um i'm when starting to streaming. realize that um part of my frustrations with hollow Knight is the same reason i've never played dark souls more than about 20 or 30 minutes and that it's actually pretty difficult and when you die you have to backtrack and if you don't have a map and you don't remember where you died it's easy to get lost. <laughs> and that's what happened to me today. Oh, uh, and that's one of those so, things where you just kind of like, fuck it, I'm done for now. Yeah, that's actually happened to me every time I've played Hollow Knight Aww. until the point I stop. But I've enjoyed it up until that point. Like it's it's a really, really good game and I'm going to keep playing it. But um, um, there's it's that it's that um, that save points being kind of far apart and when you die you go back to the save point not to the last room you died in yep, yep. so yeah I'm, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with that especially tom with dark souls but yes the the second part of that is the fact that you have to buy maps for new areas you found and also until you sit on a bench and on your save point you don't have access to see where you are on that map Oh, so like you, you, like you hold the button to show the map and it shows like your normal, you know, overlay kind of mini map thing and it shows your little icon where you are and it shows like an outline of all the rooms. But if you haven't saved at a bench and you've been exploring, your icon will be out in the middle of nowhere because you can't see the outline of the rooms that you've been to until you update that map when you save. Hmm. So if you go out exploring too far and you're kind of in over your head and you've seen these enemies for the first time and you don't really know how to deal with them that well and you die you're going to have to somehow find your way back there to to kill your soul thing and get your money back and i, I love i love the whole thing of you just died here now mm -hmm. we're incentivizing you to go back and do exactly what it is yeah. that got you killed yeah yeah i do like that part a lot it's just that you know if you didn't save anywhere near there you have that much further to to go and then if you don't remember where you were then it's kind of difficult i i think hollow knight from from what i've seen of it artificially increased its difficulty by uh being a 2d game but you know almost going about it in the way the dark souls did because dark souls doesn't have a map right you mm -hmm. but you can tell hey look there's a spooky church and then behind me there's like a ruined building in a bridge surrounded by some woods 
oh, I know exactly where I am. In 2D, that's a lot harder to pull off. It's a lot harder to mm-hmm. make the, the landscaping, the landmarking to make people go, oh, yes, I remember exactly where I am because the room looks like this. Actually, I was going yeah. to ask, is there enough aesthetic differences to make you realize where you're at if you start to retraverse where you've been? Um, there's different, there's like different areas, kind of like different biomes. Um, so if you go too far th- through one area, you might go into a, ne- a different kind of type of area where different enemies are. Or uh, there's occasionally some signs kind of pointing to areas of interest, like if there's a shop or like a, a town or whatever. But, but inside of a biome, there's I mean, not like a huge difference in rooms. <sighs> Yes and no. Not I wouldn't say enough to to memorize it that much. It's it's one of those things too. You might have a room that's fairly large, and there are you know four to six other rooms branching off of it because it's you know it's obviously not linear. Yeah. Um, and you know you go through the maybe the top right area to the next room, and that room has six other branches rooms branching off of it and it's just kind of it's easy to get lost especially I'm, I'm not good with navigation anyway you should see me trying to drive through my own neighborhood <laughs> but <laughs> it's uh it's very it is easy to get lost and you used to drive for a living or you still kind of do yeah i do but um that's what google maps is for <laughs> <laughs> true true i can't really uh say Google navigate me to my dead body and it gets yelling yeah. hollow and I was like, Oh, I'll jump up <laughs> through this. And Ooh, that's a good idea. We yeah. should build but I'm going to, tr- I'm going to try to push through that. I'm going to try to keep playing it because it is such a beautiful game and I can tell it's a really, really good game. I just need to kind of get into it more and really just bite the bullet and push through it. I'm kind of feeling almost kind of like that with near. I haven't touched yeah. near in a while. I, I, I like the game. I just, when I sit down at my desk to play something, it's hard for me to get back to it. To me, that's a Sunday. I have a few hours I know I can dedicate mm-hmm. because it's just, it's not a, f- there's f- very fresh things to it, but I haven't got through the second to the second playthrough yet to where things uh-huh. just sink. Yeah. So I'm thinking about maybe next weekend, I just sit down and I force myself to get through the first <laughs> playthrough and then get that hook yeah because it's not that the game's not bad i enjoy playing it it's just whenever i sit in front of the desk and i'm like what do i want to play it's never at the top of my list yeah and i feel I, that i'm I getting that good. too i'm getting that a little bit too with with hollow knight just because you know i have rocket league i have battlegrounds those are staples and it's easy to just jump onto one of those and it's like well no i've got this other really cool game even though i was frustrated the last time i played it it's a great game and I need to just sit down and play it more and then get, I'll get more enjoyment out of it that way. If I just do it, I think one of those things, once once you can bring yourself to get started and then you're actually enjoying it and it's just getting yourself to get started. It's almost like a weird funkish depression ish kind of feeling when you're sitting there's like, man, I just (laughs) got to start up the game and I know I'm going to like it. There, there are several Mm -hmm. like big RPGs that I, I seriously want to finish. I want to go back and actually play through them. But to me that like the mental hurdle of saying, okay, I'm going to dedicate the next X hours to doing this one thing, play this one game is a lot mm-hmm. more than sitting down and saying, ah, I think I'm just going to play around to CSGO because you know, that's five minutes and I'm done and I can yeah. walk away, even though I still play the same amount of time, right? I'm still yes. playing four hours of CSGO or four hours of mm-hmm. battlegrounds. Um, or 17 hours of Dota 2, but I can't dedicate that time <laughs> to a game I actually want to play because the thought is too much to bear. Yeah. I don't know what yeah, that definitely. is. Yeah, it it's, gets rough. I don't, I think I don't know. Through, uh, there's, there are certain yeah. games that are appreciated in different ways, and I think a lot of that is because of difficulty. You know, it, it's super easy to get into something that you're used to, you're familiar with, you know how it works, you know what you're doing. And that's what you, when you think, oh, I want to play something fun. That's what you gravitate towards. But then you've got these other games, games like Dark Souls, uh, Hollow Knight, and actually a game I haven't talked about yet, but I'm going to here soon, where it's a, it's kind of a difficult, grueling experience, but that part of overcoming that is part of the appeal of that game. And so really what we want the the viewers and listeners to take away is that being a video gamer is hard. It's one of the <laughs> hardest things you can do in the world. We have <laughs> yeah. real, real problems here that we need to surmount. 
bigger than yeah. any other problems. <laughs> Fuck world problems. Gaming <laughs> problems come first, damn it. <laughs> Oh God! Yeah. So, so tell us about this this yeah, weird this, unnamed game. So, yeah, this this is a game I've actually had a long time. It's in early access. Um, actually, my means of acquiring said game, I was doing some freelance audio work, and uh, we were discussing payment. And I was like, "Hey, just buy me this game from Steam because I don't really want to purchase an early access game, but this game looks really cool, and I really want to check it out." And that's kind of how that worked. Um, the game is called Darkwood. And the reason I jumped back into it is because they they announced the uh, final release day, which means that the early access content now is pretty much done besides the final chapter. So I kind of wanted to jump back into it and see what a, see what's changed because it's been probably a year or two since I've played it. Okay. So what what Darkwood is is a a top down survival horror, hmm. and it's it's sort of. Uh, it's very dark and gritty. It's it's got a it's very uh, like it's got its own world. It's it, the world building is cool, and it's actually pretty tense for a top down view kind of pixely pixel art game. Um, but it's got a really cool visual style. It's very it's kind of a hardcore survival horror. A uh, lot of inventory management. There's some crafting. Uh, the controls aren't amazing. They're kind of the clunky, kind of clunky controls. It kind of reminds me of the the same feeling you get playing the old Resident Evil games. Okay. So tank controls. Well, it's not tank controls, but it's it it's that just your your character doesn't control as well as you'd like him to. You know. Okay. Some of the some of the changing your inventory items and using them it can be. I think a little streamlined better. And I don't know if some of that is part of the experience they're going after, because I know some people loved those tank controls because it was kind of clumsy and that made it more tense. Um, I'm not sure if they're going for that specifically with this, but I've noticed like there's just too much to remember how it works. You know, like you have to click an item from your inventory onto your equip slot to equip it. And then you have to hit the button to equip that thing. And then you hold your right click mm. to aim and then you left click to attack and that kind of stuff. So it feels like they are designing the game for like the PS one PS two era and put it on PC. I, I don't know. Like, I mean that, that kind of equip and use um, mm -hmm. pipeline right there makes me think of yeah. that verse instead of modern day where you should be able to have one button click on an item and it does all mm -hmm. of them. And the game does have controller support and I haven't really messed with it in that way yet. So I wonder if that would be harder or easier. I don't really know. Um, and there's there's a big aside, difference. Oh, go yeah. ahead. As aside from the controls being kind of clumsy, it, it does seem like it's going to be a fun game. Well, fun in the hardcore survival horror, tense, brutal <laughs> death <laughs> of of those kind of games. But it does seem like it would be interesting. It's got some sort of story to it, I think. Um, Do you think? <laughs> uh, from well, from from when I first played it, I don't think it had much of any story. And then when I was reading the announcement that it was going to be coming out and how much it's changed over the time. I think they actually added more of a story element into it, hmm. but well, there are some characters you meet. Um, it's kind of cool how they do that because you, you go to a talk to a character and it brings up this whole other screen and they've got these really nice, cool animations where it'll show like the character on the right hand side of the screen and this cool sort of cartoony, but really dark and gritty that animates a little bit. And then you've got like the text that pops up when you're talking to him, to them and stuff. But like the one guy you meet is like a wolf man. Like it, it's like this guy in this dark cloak with a hood, but then you can see his face is actually like a wolf and everything is very dreamy. Um, it almost feels like you're in some kind of dark dream world or you're dead or something already. Um, you're surrounded in this forest and you're basically, you try to get out and the game is structured like day one, day two, day three. And then every time it gets to be nighttime, you have to go back to your home area and like barricade yourself in because things will start attacking and you can't survive outside at night. And then when it becomes day, you can actually go out and explore and try to find stuff. It's, it's pretty cool. Does it have, do the waves get like harder and harder as the nights go? 
I don't know if it's waves and I've really only gotten through like two nights. So I'm not sure. That sounds like that can get into a really cool mechanic of how much do you stay back and help make sure you can barricade versus go out and right. try to find your way home. And how many resources yeah. do you use on day one? Because you know, you'll need those mm-hmm. for two and three. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you walk around finding planks and then you need nails and then you can barricade your windows, that kind of stuff. The art but, style <laughs> looks interesting. It's, um, I, I cannot place what it reminds me of, but there's uh, another game that that reminds me of. Mm-hmm. But just the top down horror just feels weird because anymore, I feel it's hard to get horror unless you are right on top of the character you're playing. So I, I initially yes, thought no. that too, because I was, I was picturing something like Link to the Past. Um, mm-hmm. but in, and I'm, I'm actually going to show Irk this, this gameplay trailer. So in this segment, you know, you've got um, a flashlight and you can only mm-hmm. see in like less than a 45 degree angle in front of you. Mm-hmm. So. You know, you can easily yeah, that, have that's a big sneak mechanic. upon you. That's a big okay. mechanic of the game because you can see around your character, but that cone is illuminated a little bit, and certain things are only visible when you're looking at them through that cone of vision. So you still are using so the field you of might view. Have, you can hear enemies following you, and until you turn around and actually look at them, you can't see that they're there. And then you turn around and you look, and they're really close. You know, it's that kind of thing. Okay, so that I, that that makes sense, and because you're <clears throat> even for being top down, you're still using. Uh, person-esque field of view right you still got a limited yeah. aperture mm-hmm. um so I, I just saw that there was a, a lightning strike in the trailer that illuminated everything that could make for a tense moment if yeah. you know you're off doing something you don't see the creature behind you and a lightning strike hits and then you're like holy mm-hmm. shit i'm surrounded yeah <laughs> so I'm, I'm really looking forward to delving more into this game um the the first i guess what I felt from the game so far on the very limited time I've played it, probably 20 or 30 minutes, um, the entire time I'm playing, I feel a sense of dread. I feel lost. I feel weak and vulnerable and confused, but also intrigued. So <laughs> I think that's like, uh, what that's what people generally try to get out of players in, in games like this. So I yeah, think they're doing that a pretty good like job. They're, they're hitting the right buttons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds pretty effective. So yeah, look up Darkwood. It, it looks kind of cool. So I'm a, I'm gonna try to keep playing that a little bit more and maybe maybe give a a better a better critique of it later on. But Not other bad. than that, that's all I've been playing this week. Uh, what about you guys, Tom? What about you? Have you played anything? Uh yeah. So I started, and and I apologize to everyone who may or may not have tuned into the stream. I didn't see anyone in the chat room. Um, so I, I played Salt and Sanctuary. Started that. Got through like the first hour or two. Uh, and apparently my stream settings were totally fucked. Um, so uh, the stream started out great. Uh, and then about 30 minutes in, I got to about six, seven frames per hour. Um, and that's that's being pretty generous. Uh, so it was it was a slideshow. Uh, but it's it's OK. I don't think i could recommend this game it's not bad so the the premise is hey it's dark souls but in 2d and it okay i can see that enemies hit pretty hard you revive at like weird churchy things that are kind of like bonfires you collect salt and can expand your your hero uh there's a lot of different uh weapons with different move sets it's okay i guess it's a 2d analog for dark souls the the graphics aren't bad but they've got a weird weird aesthetic mix like some of the stuff looks beautiful and gorgeous some of the environmental art is wonderful and then you get to the character models and it looks like something that someone would have drawn in a a third grade notebook in study hall um (laughs) and i I don't want to i don't want to rip on this game too hard because you can tell that these people put a lot of time and effort into it but it's it's a weird mashup when you see these beautiful environments with these characters that just don't fit Mm -hmm. um it, it kind of it takes you out of the game, especially when you're trying to change your inventory and it zooms in on your dude's stupid little face. Because it just <laughs> stupid looks, little stupid face. little face. It just stupid looks little face. Bad. It just yeah. looks bad. Um, it's it plays decently. It controls decently. It's not as tight as I would like it. Um, mm-hmm. The controls are different enough from something like Dark Souls, where your I think the right trigger is roll instead of attack. So mm. there would be there have been several times where I meant to attack and I rolled, or I meant to roll and I attacked, getting me killed several times. 
Um, the mechanic isn't purely Dark Souls, though. So I got killed by a boss, and instead of it saying, oh, you got killed by a boss, your salt and stuff is going to be outside the boss door, it said, hey, he took your shit. You have to kill him to get, to get it back, which is pretty cool. You have to take nice. revenge on the shit that killed you to get your salt back. So that's, that's okay. That's good. I, I think I'm going to try to put another hour or two into it this week. I honestly mm-hmm. don't know if I'm going to finish this game. I don't feel bad about not finishing it. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Watch, watch some stuff on YouTube about it. Um, listen to more gaming po- <clears throat> podcasts. Talk about Salt and Sanctuary. Listen to Tom um, die on stream. Yeah I, yeah, I do not. I do not recommend it. I'm um, looking at the trailer. One thing I love is the name Salt and Sanctuary. Sounds like such a cool. Yeah, a cool I, game. And then the logo looks really nice. It's got that gothic sort of uh, fantasy gothic dark feel to it and then I, the, looking from the gameplay trailer it looks like it could have been cool but it's kind of looks janky too yeah as Look far at, as the animation and art try to find a, a character model where you can see their face because you compare the beautiful logo and the gothic font and how awesome this game could have been and how awesome it looks right up front and then you mm-hmm. get to actual gameplay and it just looks janky as hell i'm definitely seeing what you mentioned where certain things look like they're not really a part of the rest of it. Like it's a different, yeah. there's not that cohesiveness. And you know, I'm, we all know. And one of the games I'm going to talk about, uh, I am not a graphic snob. Uh, I'm an aesthetic snob. So mm-hmm. like you can, you can have a game that looks like super meat boy and super meat boy is fucking beautiful. And the reason it's fucking beautiful is because everything feels like it fits into super meat boy. Um, Binding of Isaac, the same way the aesthetic is perfectly tuned. It's, you've got this weird it doesn't quite fit and it feels out of place stuff that's what i don't like right twilight princess and wind waker are both beautiful in completely different ways but they're both beautiful mm-hmm. wind waker i love the wind waker aesthetic oh my god it's amazing uh so you don't like salt and sanctuary <sighs> no no nope, made no no I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna try to play that's a little fair. bit more of that um you, you don't like have to every, like every game you play, play. yeah i know <laughs> damn it adam <laughs> So, so I, 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 fuck. I, uh, I do want to talk about Splatoon two with Irk last. Nice. So, um, <clears throat> I apologize. I keep dying on stream. Let me, let me grab this water. So, um, yeah, he's before we get to that though. Um, uh, you've got one other game that you've been playing some of, and I don't know shit of what this is. What the hell is a dark room? So, um, I, I love watching gaming YouTube videos. Everything from critiques to analysis, writing on games is great, Super Bunny Hop is great. I watch extra credits all the time. Uh, and there was an episode on um, waiting games. So, you know, like Clicker Heroes or Cookie Clicker or Adventure Capitalist, where you literally pl- load up the game and nothing happens except a counter ticks up, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> There's a, a segment of games sort of like that, uh, but their waiting isn't the objective. Um, they're called unfolding games. That's what they're commonly known as. Where your game, and I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to load up this game for Urk right now because it's a browser-based game. It is totally free. Um, here's, here's your interface. You have a button that says Stoke Fire. And I'm doing can, this right now, actually. <laughs> yeah, so you, you can stoke a fire. It's literally, it's a white page with black text and some buttons. Um, that's how the game starts out. So you stoke a fire, and the thing ticks down, and you throw another log on the fire, and the thing ticks down. And there's a story in the sidebar happening when you do this. Um, but after a little bit, the game will go, okay, well, here, something has changed in the story. Here's another link to go to a new place here's some new buttons here's a new mechanic and it constantly evolves the gameplay from starting out at the level of interactivity of a clicker game and moving into something bigger and better to where there's an entire adventure in this game but you won't know it unless you go through it yourself there's there's no shortcut it's not going to say oh look you know it's this big uh you know awesome triple a game with everything exploding and happening at once and you can slide and jump kick and fly and shoot dudes and throw grenades it's like hey here's a button to throw a log on a fireplace that sounds a lot like a uh, text-based adventure 
with just a little bit of really, really low end HTML on the front. Oh, it's simple. The whole game is simple, but I liked this well enough. And I actually, I put six hours into this. I didn't wow. realize it. I, I, so I was listening to some podcast and I was playing this stupid little game because I saw it on YouTube. I was like, huh? So I kept playing it and I kept playing. I'm like, holy shit, I've got to go to bed. I have work in the morning. I got enough out of this game that I found it uh, on the Google Play Store and I threw the guy a dollar because I got at least a dollar's worth of entertainment out of his stupid little. It's not even a flash game. It's it's stupid little JavaScript and HTML game for free on his website. Uh, But it's it's really good. However, no, he does not like the game enough to not call it stupid consistently. (laughs) It's it's not a high budget game. It's not beautiful in any respect it's It's, a text-based game it's it's text you could say it's beautiful in in certain ways but but it's not just text okay it's text right now okay so it actually gets (laughs) into being an interactive thing yes oh okay so that's interesting yeah so it starts out as like a a little text adventure with some buttons so here look now now i can build a trap and i I don't want to i don't want to go into uh, all the spoilers because this game does unfold into something cool. But look, I stoked the fire enough and a builder came by and she says she can make traps. Now there's a forest and I can gather some wood. I'm going to make a trap. Oh, I can build a cart to carry more wood. And the game just slowly adds more and more until you have a full game. Um, and this, the interface you see when you jump into it is not the only interface the game has. Um, it is, it is interesting. Uh, it's, up there with pretentious and artsy, uh, but it's free. So head to a dark room dot double speak games dot com. Totally free. Load it up. If you like it, buy the app. It's a dollar. Nah, it's good. It's good. It's it's honestly the weirdest game I've ever played. Uh, and it's it's really good. I did not expect it out of it. Uh, speaking of really good, there's one game we both <clears throat> God, I just recently started. Uh, Splatoon 2 has finally launched. Nintendo, one of their big Switch selling points, you know, you had Zelda, you had the re-release of Mario Kart, and you had Splatoon 2. And that was really what was going to anchor it down with potentially ARMS. No one knew what ARMS was yet, though. And Metroid, because Metroid rules. Yeah, but no one knew that at the time. I know. But yeah, Splatoon (laughs) 2. And um, Hold on. Before we get into this, I've got one question to ask you. Yeah. No, no. Are you a squid Fuck or you. are you a kid? God damn it. <laughs> hey, Irk, don't get cooked. Stay off the hook. So is anyone going to oh, be upset God. if I cut his mic for a little bit while I explain <laughs> yeah, go the ahead. tune? Go ahead. We got Aww. this. Me and you. Okay. Let's do this. <laughs> Bye, Tom. Damn it. Okay. And he's actually muted for a second. Aww. But so um, <laughs> Platoon 2 is the um, it's the second hatch of Splatoon. It's really, really fun shooter. But it's interesting because the shooting mechanic is yeah you're back live I, you only got the penalty box for five seconds um but instead of the objective being kill your opponent it's kind of i always take it back to tony hawk turf wars where oh, the name man. of the game is to cover the ground with the, your paint and have the most ground covered at the end of the match so help, okay. killing your opponents helps because they're not there to take back the territory but in the end, if you don't get any kills, you still could win if your opponents really, really suck. But you still could win without getting a single kill. So and hmm. you have different classes. Like you have people who their weapons are definitely designed for anti-personnel. But then you have this one called the roller. It's just really wide and just lays down a fuck ton of paint. But I have gotten killed by the roller more times than any other weapon in the game. Because you, you can't see behind you all the time and you're like doing your thing and painting shit and someone just rolls over you. You're dead. You're dead. <laughs> and then you're dead. Then you're dead. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot of negatives that's going to get brought up, but I do want to start with the positives. This game plays great. The motion controls are actually pretty solid. Uh, you can still do your twin stick or uh, standard shooter if you want, but the motion controls work pretty good um the matchmaking's interesting you only get two maps at a time and they cycle the maps yeah we'll we'll get to the other shit of it um and every week when you come in they'll tell you like this huge elaborate thing that they do more than they need to but a huge elaborate thing where they explain here are the maps currently being played for casual here's the maps currently being played for league so for one week you'll have two maps next week you have two different maps 
So it's really interesting how they're doing that to try to keep it artificially fresh by changing between these maps. Hmm. Um, and just in general, the gameplay is great. Um, yeah. They have a cool store mechanic to it, and it's just all in all, the game is very good. I, now, I feel like, well, let's, okay. let's say this before. So I, I really feel like we have to, in this age of microtransactions and tiny $1 DLCs, when we say store in Splatoon 2, you are not paying real money. You get like however many coins at the end of a battle and you can go spend your, your virtual coins. You can't buy virtual coins as DLC. It's not that kind of game. You just get it by playing the game. It's play to unlock. So I feel like in the world that everyone is fucking over everyone in the video game industry, we have to say that Nintendo hasn't gone down that rabbit hole yet. 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 Uh, they are Hopefully starting to go don't. into the DLC world, which is they started at the Wii U and it's not something they're common with. So, yep. mm. but um, that the game's great. Uh, there's a few things in Splatoon I want to get to before we get to Nintendo at large, because okay. holy fuck, Nintendo at large has a rose party <laughs> coming on. Them. And it's not us. We're late to the party because we're Saturday. The Internet went on fire because of Nintendo. Yep. But um, Bivens in chat called out a really, really frustrating thing about this game. Uh, let's say Tom and I, we managed to get into a party, which we'll discuss that mechanic in a minute. Um, and we both have the same gun. And all of a sudden we realized, well, shit, you're both using dualies. I want to use a roller. Well, too bad. We're in the lobby. You can't change your weapons when you're in the lobby. You have to mm. back out to the, um, the rapper world to be able to actually change your loadouts and stuff. Which means it departies you. So now... You oh, have to get sucks. in a new match and not, not you people like, like Irk and I get into a new match. I or Irk has to get into a new match. And then one of us has to do a join and hopefully the not, the lobby is not full. Cause if it is, you have to wait for a slot to free up so you can join too. So you could be looking at at least two, but probably more matches just to change your fucking weapon. Oh, that sucks. and then you get in. And then the nice thing is once you do party up, they keep you together. But you can't mm. form a party outside of a lobby. But not necessarily on the same team. Well, we don't know that for sure yet. We do. Other people do. Oh, it's actually... Okay. Yep. Well, that's frustrating. Yep. Um, so Nintendo has released a mobile app for their online. Um, I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff to be done. Since you have a phone as your mobile app or for your matchmaking app, they have a home world of a Nintendo Switch, and then each game gets their own subdivision in that app. Like Splatoon, when you go into that, it gives you some stuff like, here's all your stats. And they can do some really cool stuff with that. And also, it's neat. potentially, they've talked about, you set up game appointments with people, it'll push notification to your phone, a lot of cool stuff. However, right now, it's a really, really bad piece of shit. Um, the, we couldn't get the invite system to work through the game or the phone properly. Um, the voice chat automatically put me into it and I didn't even know. And okay. then to actually get my phone to silence, I had to close the app because it locked my volume on my phone. Mm. This thing is weird yeah. and doesn't it's, function well. It's really weird. You can't get friends list from there. You can't join party. You can't make a party on your phone. So as of right now, Xbox Live, you have, oh, okay, Tom, you're on. Let's create a party. Yeah. You could be playing game A. I'm playing game B. It works fine. And then we're in. Then we're in. We don't have to do anything else. It's done. We can play all kinds of matches, end up on the same Oh, team. no, I'm saying you can be playing a different game. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, it's too. a system level thing. Yeah. With Nintendo, you have to be playing the same game, and you have to be in the same lobby for it to work. Their system is just terrible right now. Nintendo is, I love the iPhone idea, but this system has been figured out 15 years ago. <laughs> Xbox Live, granted, the original Xbox Live didn't really do it right, but halfway through the 360's life, Xbox knocked it out of the park and no one's had to try it yet. Quiet. There oh, you go. There we go. There we go. Now I'm, now I'm, uh, I think you, I'm back on. Yes. Yeah, there was an actual hardware <laughs> See, issue there. This is why you shouldn't mute me. You <laughs> fucked it up. I yeah. didn't mute you. Your uh, cable came unplugged. Oh, did it? Yeah. Oh, shit. 
Okay. Anyway, um, so <laughs> <laughs> um, I totally lost it. Oh yeah. So I don't know why Nintendo can't do what Sony did. And what everyone knows who wants to make an online system does, and they go, hmm, who's done this right? Microsoft? Let's just carbon copy Xbox Live and change all the proper nouns. For the for fuck's sake, Nintendo, this shit isn't hard. Uh, this operates like online play did 10 to 15 years ago. And that's not a good thing. This doesn't even operate like that. Okay, yeah. Yeah, you're right. 10 to 15 years ago would be acceptable. This isn't acceptable right now. They're going to so, fix it. I have no doubt eventually they will get this to work. The, the whole, so <clears throat> granted it's a third party add on, but something I saw for Splatoon uh, is so I've, I've got these headphones, right? They do Bluetooth audio. I can Bluetooth to my phone, but the switch won't do Bluetooth. So I have to cable up to that. Um, I saw a third party add on. That's a squid shaped Y adapter. A reverse Y adapter uh, for an aux cable. So you can plug your phone into the squid, plug your switch into the squid, and then the aux cable goes to your headphones. Or you plug your headphones into the squid, and that will automatically mux your audio from your phone's voice chat to the switch's game sound, so you can actually listen to the same things at the same time. Why the <laughs> fuck is that a thing? Put the voice chat on the fucking system! Even then, um... That's a relatively new thing. Like my, whenever I'm on Xbox, oh. Xbox One, I never had game chat in my voice comms. Like I, I don't get it because I've I've played I've played on the PS3 online on the 360, and they were great. And you could have, you know, shitty headsets that just did voice communication, but you could turn on, hey, put game audio in my shitty headset, and it would do it. No, oh, no, no, not 360. Uh, just, you had to use drive tier. You had to use optical out. And then you had to run optical out into Turtle Beach or something to get game mm -hmm. through the headset. Maybe I'm thinking of the PS3. The PS3 let me do it on my shitty little headset. Well, because they did Bluetooth <laughs> shit. That's true. The Just drive to, the, like, your, drive to your local radio shack and buy that adapter. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> the, the point being, this isn't that fucking hard, Nintendo. Why on earth do we have to jump through these kind of hoops to play online? I know Nintendo's all about protect the children, save the children, but for fuck's yeah. sake, your core audience base that used to be eight years old is now approaching 30. <laughs> yeah. We don't give a shit if someone calls us a fucking asshole in online play. That's probably the least offensive thing we've heard out of 12 year old mouths. If you're trying to defend the small people, just you know, use your parental control app that's really fucking slick. The parental controls on the Switch are great. They're better than anything else out there. Use those sons of bitches to stop it. Because <laughs> you are making it way too hard for the majority of your audience to enjoy online. All it is, is all you have to do is build into your games, hey, to do voice chat, here's the system level API call, you know, like Sony and Microsoft already do. And in, in the parental controls, you can just say, yeah, we're going to deny access. So when it goes to initiate voice chat, it says, mm, sorry, parental controls, you can't talk to people online. And it shuts it off in game. It's a really elegant and simple solution, but Nintendo can't get it through their heads because so, they're time travelers. So the gist of it is... As we were saying before the Switch even came out, Switch is behind the times when it comes to all things online. And we're yeah. not, I mean, it's not exactly surprising. And well, it's, it sucks because these games are so fucking good. Mario Kart and Splatoon are awesome. They're some of the best fun I've had online if I'm playing by myself against randos on the internet. As soon as you try to get mm -hmm. more complex than that, it all falls apart. <laughs> I think Unless you're in the same room. Yes. I've heard the local work. multi the the local multi line. rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did that a couple weeks ago. It was really good. But they're trying to do something novel with the phone. And I give them a break in the sense that I understand that getting that app working immediately may not work right or be easy. Mm -hmm. But your matchmaking system is broke right now. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna throw out the, the Nintendo apologist card that I throw out every week, it seems like. And I'm gonna say that Nintendo's online hasn't actually launched, right? When it does launch, it'll be 20 bucks a month, which is an amazing price. That said, if that's what I'm getting, I'm not paying. No, no, no. no. This is a launch. It's free at first. <laughs> is it? I thought it was a beta period for free. No, it's free. Don't. This, this is the launch. No, no, this however, is a fucking sad launch. However, I will say this. <laughs> that launch is 100% because of Splatoon. They forced this app out before it was ready to have it ready for mm -hmm. Splatoon. This this is the worst launch since SimCity 6. 
Five. Five. Whatever. Sim City doesn't have a number, but it's not actually the yeah, first. Yeah, but Sim just City. imagine how no, bad no, it's five is or four. No, it did have a number. The EA <laughs> one where the servers fucked. Yeah, no, it didn't have a number. It was just called Sim City. I thought it was like Sim City four uh, nope, or five. Nope. It was just Sim City. It's it's just Sim City. It it's Sim City. It's two brothers. But either way, either way. Yes, so Nintendo fucked up. Oh shit, I misspoke. Once again. Sorry, Dark Soul. It's not 20 bucks a month. It's 20 bucks a year. Yeah, yeah, 20 a year. Their, yeah. their oh, service is going to yeah. be dirt cheap. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's going to be, it's going to cost next to nothing because it is actively shit. However, it is, in the end, what's going to allow you to play online. Much I, like Xbox Live. You don't have Xbox Live, you can't do matchmaking for anything. You can't play online. Why would I pay for something that aggravates me this much? Because literally you won't be able to play Splatoon online without it. That's true. Am I going to pay 20 bucks a year for Splatoon? Do yes. I really want that? Yes. Am I just going to go back to PC gaming and say, wow, this is why I left <laughs> consoles in the first place? No. I want, I want Valve to buy Nintendo. Ah, oh, fuck that. No, no, I, and um, as AOL says, charging for multiplayer online is just bullshit. And it, I agree. It is absolute bullshit. Uh, unless, so, so to be fair, um, for Microsoft, for a lot of their games, you can, as a developer, say, hey, Microsoft, I want you to run all my dedicated servers and handle my infrastructure for me. That, I can see where the payment goes. It goes to supporting infrastructure for the games that you're playing online. But for the Switch... You know, I don't think Nintendo is standing up dedicated servers. I, I don't know. I'm not sure how that looks. But for the games that use just base matchmaking with peer-to-peer uh, networking to get their, their games running, yeah, what the fuck are we paying for? And with Microsoft, though, they also have, A, a badass application because Xbox Live is the best online experience out there. It is. It really is. Uh, you have the party systems. You have your dedicated servers. You get free games like what PlayStation that does. It's mm-hmm. it is just a really good service. But that said, yeah, Nintendo is once again fucking up the online. I have hoped they're going to get something right out of it, but we'll see. We'll see cuz as I, of right I, now it's garbage. I have no faith. I have no faith. But you've been pl- surprising. You've been playing anything else? Um I have I've I've played a little bit of Counter-Strike. Um Counter-Strike has become a my chill game. I know I said that before, but it's it's maintaining its level as my chill game. Throw on some music or a podcast and just blast some fools, which in my case, <laughs> it means get blasted by some fools. Yeah, I suck at that. I really, really suck at that. But yeah, that's that's about it for me. And seriously, go play a dark room. It's free. It's in your browser. Go now. Like, like put our podcast over to the side. Don't don't you shut me off. I swear to God. But open a new <laughs> browser tab and check that shit out. Yeah, I'll pass. I know you're high on it, but Eric, I know you're not going to play the dark room. But have you played anything this week? Um, some same old, same old on the bus. It's um actually did a little Mario Kart, but normally it's just has been Heroes and Splatoon Two and Rocket League. That's Usually. pretty much it. Though I did do some battlegrounds in a different fashion. I think oh. we discussed that a little bit with more of the um oh, playing yeah. more aggressive, hyper aggressive plays. Did it work? For I would it? like to do that more. Um, when I try to Next go hyper aggressive, I drop in big areas where people normally go and oh. no one's there. <laughs> it always happens that way. Isn't that weird? It's like, yeah. all right, look, we'll just drop Pachinki this time and we'll just get an immediate cool fight and it'll be fun. And well, then you drop we there do? and nobody's there. And we dropped fucking school and there was two people, <laughs> two fucking people. And that's yeah. a good place to be without anyone there. <laughs> right. But now that's pretty much it. So um, I think that's pretty, that's, wrapped it for all of us for what we've been doing it's been a pretty slow week i think yeah uh there was a little bit of news i want to start with a fun interesting weird one um <laughs> Rot- or, um overwatch league before it even launches is getting into some uh, legal scruffles so for those of you who haven't seen overwatch league has kind of done the um generic logo thing like major league baseball nba it's one color on one side, one color on the other, and you have a silhouette of a player in the center separating them. NBA does it, MLB does it, um, MLG for actual video gaming does it. So, you know, Overwatch did it, but they're the only ones that changed the color. 
And now baseball is trying, or Major League Baseball is trying to sue them for infringement. So all or I don't Blizzard, know if it's necessarily suing, but they're trying to get them to not be able to use that logo. All Blizzard has to do is say, okay, if you're going to do this to us, you're going to have to take down MLG and BA, HL, and you know, <laughs> literally everyone else who uses the three colors with a uh, an outline of a person playing said sport. Yeah, I, logo yeah. Idea. <laughs> I really don't see their case, but you know the worst nightmare is if NBA is paying the licensing for the logo. Right? That would be shit. <laughs> because that means, oh, fuck, there's a precedence here. Yeah. But no, I thought that was garbage. It was interesting. It's really interesting the fact that Major League Baseball would even care, well, let alone come yeah. after someone like right. that. Right. You know, you know why this is happening? It's because literally no one watches baseball and people do watch Overwatch. That's what's happening. Esports is taking over and regular sports don't like it. Calling it now. Four more years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. About that. Um, <laughs> but um, two of the owners in the Overwatch League are sports people. One's from the NFL. And mm-hmm. they're a little different. They're still two tone, but it's nothing like that. And the second one is the Mets owner, a Major League Baseball team owner, is in the <laughs> Overwatch League. So technically, with MLB suing him, he is partially suing himself, or his other league, because in baseball, the owners are actually joint together, and what they do is represent someone represents all of them. So technically, his representative is suing him again. Oh, Jesus. Which is a really, really, really weird thing. <sighs> yeah. But yes, I thought that was funny. It's a quick, funny little laugh. Um, there was some news that hit ho- close to home for me, I'm sure a little bit for Adam, and I know a lot of people out there watching the cast, definitely. And then some people don't give a fuck because they think the game's stupid as hell. But... <laughs> <laughs> There's a case to be made for all of those points. <laughs> yes, every point possible was just made. But um, RuneScape, you know, the MMO that honestly, in my mind, really led the way for MMOs. Uh, it's free back in the late 90s, early 2000s. And now it's still going and it's still strong. I still don't know how. They're releasing a uh, mobile edition of the game. <laughs> and we're not talking separated. It's the same game, oh, yeah. mobile. And it's cross play with the PC. So we're taught this is if they pull this off and they pull this off well, this could get them up there again. Because <laughs> I, I mean, as of right now, I think they still tout being one of the biggest yeah. because their free base really helps. Yeah. So so I might I might need to remember my RuneScape password <laughs> from middle school because I I haven't logged in since then. But uh, honestly, this is this is pretty fucking cool. This is hey, we're RuneScape and we're going to be relevant again. Hopefully, now I've I've never seen an MMO work really really well on a mobile platform. I've seen it tried and it, it worked okay. Uh, but if RuneScape can pull off the interface, which is going to be their biggest biggest problem here, uh, then yeah, this will be around for a while. Well, especially since RuneScape is right click heavy. Because yes. the sub menus, yeah. it's very right click heavy. Um, and for those of you who don't really know RuneScape, RuneScape was a 2D, 3D MMO. Can, it's okay. You're old enough. You can call it retro. You can use those words. It, the <laughs> old version of it. But no, they're actually about to overhaul it again. And it looks decent. I mean, it's aged well. They've updated it. It's just so long and so old. And so, it's still fun. It's my favorite MMO still to date because the skill system, I think, is better than anything WoW's done, like the trade skills. Oh, my God. So it's not as old as I thought it was. Uh, it only came out early 2000s. Yeah, 16 years ago. Okay, it, it was 01. January 2001. Damn. Yeah, that's um, it's it's still really, really old. <laughs> Especially in this day and age of MMOs, WoW is the only one that really lasts that long. Even Guild Wars had to do a second iteration. Yep. But either way, it's coming to mobile. If they um, pull it off, wow. I'm yeah, looking be- forward. See, I'm always so worried when I leave the house because I'm playing RuneScape constantly. And <laughs> how am I supposed to stand in the middle of a rock spamming selling Rune Kite for 40k if hey, I'm leaving um, the house? So now I can do that also while I'm traveling on the bus hey, Adam, or waiting got- in the waiting room. You you got all that shit on your armor. If you trade it to me, I'll I'll, yeah. I'll buff your armor for you. 
Yeah, trim free it. gold yeah, let trim. Me, let me let me trim your free armor. gold free gold trimming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then um, so I think that's enough on that RuneScape. Um, yeah, we've we've talked enough of it today to last us the rest of the year. Yep. Yeah. Um, I want to hit on game sales for this last month. Holy shit, that's a big sale. So the month before. <laughs> um was the first month i've seen a long time where a fighting game topped the list with injustice 2. Mm -hmm. this month tekken 7 tops the list on game sales cross platforms Hmm. so this is two months in a row fighting games have been on the top and actually this month it's one tech and two injustice that's interesting and and injustice surprises me more than anything because the first game was kind of kind of touted for being shit I don't know. Are you confusing it with the uh, Mortal no, Kombat crossover? You're right. You're right. I am confusing it with the Mortal Kombat crossover. Yeah, that was before Nether Realms yeah, got okay. involved. Okay. Never yeah. mind then. What I said was wrong. Yeah, that one's touted for its story. It's got a really yeah. good story. But yeah, so those two games topping it off, followed by the old standby of way too old to be on this list. So yeah, fighting games making a rally in 2017. I'm not going to go that far. But it's it's good to see Tekken, you know, being a champ, especially compared to Street Fighter, which it is and always has been better than Tekken is better than Street Fighter. I just said it. I agree. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, a, huge, actually, I'm a huge Tekken fan fan. I agree, too. Holy shit. I've always, liked, I've always liked Tekken, but I haven't played much Street Fighter, to be fair. I mean, I played I played Street Fighter, but I respect Street Fighter. I play Tekken. I don't like there's only one projectile fighter I like and that's Mortal Kombat. Other than that, I like my virtual fighter DOA Tekken's. DOA was mm-hmm. fun. I I couldn't ever get into Mortal Kombat because the the controls are that's weird to me. Like Mortal Kombat falls into the more technical side of things and then you've got Street Fighter which is a blend and then you've got Tekken which is you can literally mash buttons and win unless you are an expert. <laughs> I was going right? to say, yeah. man, if someone, if someone can't, there's only one character people can match against on me whenever I was back in my tech and tag days. Oh, you know, shit. Someone comes at me with Eddie, they might be able to mash it. Without Eddie, though, I would just destroy you if you're trying <laughs> Eddie to Eddie was such a cool character. Yes, he was. Uh, for those such who a unique, don't, unique style. For those who don't remember, Eddie was a break dancer. So he was heavy kick focused and he was fluid. They did his moves where they were all really fluid. And mm-hmm. I think it was actually really, really advanced for at that time, especially because that was PS2. Actually, come to think of it, Adam, what was your favorite fighting game? Oh, I think the one I played the most was Tekken Tag. I'm pretty sure that's the one I've played the most. Either that or maybe Soul Calibur I played a lot of at one point. Soul Calibur was fucking rad. I did like Soul Calibur. What about you, Tom? Um, I'd love me some Soul Calibur, but Tekken 3 was my jam. I, I still maintain that Tekken 3 is the best, if not one of the best fighting games ever made. Um, and, and to be fair, we, I, I just posted this in chat and we're getting corrections. Um, and he was not a kickboxer. That's not where his style or uh, a break dancer. That's not where his style came from. He was involved in the, um, essentially Brazilian dance fighting known as, uh, Keporia? I'm going to totally fuck up that pronunciation. Uh, but if huh. you do a Google search for Brazilian dance fighting, you will come up on the Wikipedia article for Caporia. And that's an actual thing. They made an actual thing um, part of that game. It's break nice. dance fighting. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it's, but it's still cool as hell. That yeah. is okay. <laughs> I, I, and I've learned. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Drop in knowledge, 72 pin connector style. Um, and then a little bit more news, not too much, because that right there was my big news. Because holy shit, fighting games back, man. That, right. that was my childhood right there. Right. <laughs> um, there's a huge ass sale going on in GOG for people who like more, le- I don't want to say legitimate, it makes me feel like a snob, but legitimate RPGs. <laughs> um, more like old school style hardcore RPGs. Yeah, Boulder's Gate, uh, Wasteland, Torment. You'll find no Mass Effect here. These are real RPGs. <laughs> exactly. <But> no, um, for <laughs> Get another, your witchers out of here. This, this <laughs> for another shit. two days, um, there's a huge sale going on for GOG. Um, if you enjoy any of those games or been intrigued at all, 
there's some classics and new ones the classics some of those are really cheap right now ice wind dales down to under seven same with the original system shock State. two is is a buck 49 jesus christ and, and keep in mind um i'm, I'm gonna keep repping gog but when you buy a game on gog.com it's all drm free you're not gonna get like you, you can if you want to you can download their weird app and download it through that but if you want to just like a fucking exe file to double click somewhere and install the damn game that's all you need no logging in no bullshit no drm no protection no always online it's just a fucking exe for uh you um slightly paranoid people you will love this if you're or, looking at or, you tom or for the people who just want to play their game on their laptop and on their computer without having to buy the game 75 times on 20 different steam accounts you're I, looking at you tom oh my god it's gog has been the best thing for for little land parties ever it is miraculous fair enough because you love to be able to split that game off so multiple people can play one right? purchase right it's great <laughs> <laughs> We do not no comment. Guess. Yes. No um, comment. <laughs> uh, Shadow Run um, is three dollars, and I highly recommend that. It's kind of a tactical RPG. Uh, it's wonderful. It's, so I've never played the newer ones. I only played the Sega Genesis version. Oh, play the new one. It's really good. It's it's it just drips with cyberpunk style. I don't have time for that. It's so good. Shadow of War's coming. So, uh, so get your shadow on with Shadow uh, Run. Fuck y'all. Shadow of War is going to be amazing <laughs> but either way one more tidbit of news um for you two sorry i don't have the official links in here but so my favorite thing i saw at e3 this year was anthem anthem is by bioware it's going to be their destiny essentially but um you're in these robotic suits and you're iron manning around this vast world with these random encounters and random events going on it, it looks pretty cool and and you've got really horrible stage actors doing acting like gamers inside of the trailer which is just what i look for in an online game yes okay <laughs> the, this that aside their voice comms were terrible but they were driving home points about how you could upgrade your armor with new weapons and stuff hey mindy do you want to totally wrap around this guy and give me covering fire so i can blast him with my wrist rockets okay dave i've got your back dog hey dude i never say anything about the voice acting but the game looked good <laughs> the game looked great but if they would if they would just all shut up that trailer would have been so much more yeah. effective okay i agree yeah it would have been um but there's a um huge bit of news that their lead writer is gone the new lead writer is someone that is well well liked in the community they brought back in oh my god i blanked on his name but he is lead writer for <laughs> mass effect one mass effect two and knights of the old republic the game's known as being some of the best stories in all of games holy shit so, so mass effect one was great i'm gonna go on a mass effect tangent mass effect one was great but a little slow because it's the first in a big long trilogy not a whole lot's at stake other than you know the fate of your little segment of the universe not the universe at large mass mm -hmm. effect 2 had some of the best game writing i have seen in a very very long time it wasn't lazy it took its time it was paced well kotor yeah. is a fucking classic simply because of the writing sure the gameplay mm -hmm. is okay and whatnot but you don't play knights of the old republic for the gameplay you play it for that story yeah the gameplay yeah. is actually really clunky now like this is huge fucking news i i just i really worry that a game kind of like anthem this big you know multiplayer thing shooter ish adventure game is gonna mm -hmm. push story by the wayside and well it, it I, just, makes I i have i have high hopes and low expectations it makes me happy to see this though because destiny got raked over the coals for it's just absent story there was right. no story to yeah. it yeah yeah and now you're taking a game that is essentially ea's attempt at being a destiny killer and they're doing their i think their power play to say we will put a story in this game and the people hype will get drawn. there they've got the hype mm -hmm. right i'm i'm hyped for this game and i am totally not buying it on launch i i need to see where the community goes if oh, the game course. is decent if the story is even worth paying attention to 
I probably won't get it at launch to say unless they do some open beta stuff that might pull me in. Yeah, I'd play the open beta. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm saying if they have an open beta and it's good, I, I might get launched. Oh, okay. Yeah, but um, I get that. Either way, I will get it quick though because this is a type of game where you want to be with the community because you get left too far yeah. behind. You end up playing the game alone, and then you think the game sucks because you're actually playing a different game than everyone else. Unless it's big enough to right. avoid that problem entirely, World of Warcraft style. Yeah. Yes, but you have to be pulling in a shit ton of new players constantly. Yeah, you do. So I'm I'm really excited about this, but I don't know how you can structure a good story in a game that big. And this is actually here's a tangent that I avoided talking to you precast. Um, there have been MMOs that have had great stories before, and it's totally mm-hmm. not what you think because twelve people played this game talking about the Matrix <laughs> Online. Oh, oh, fuck. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. I did not know that was a thing. So here's here's the cool part about the Matrix Online. They had like these big uh, raid style missions that you would go on with your ship. And it's basically your your guild. Um, and the players and guilds who completed these were actually like, completed these first were actually stamped down into the future lore of the world through future updates. Like, you know, ship name, uh, you know, balls to the wall. Awesome. Sixty nine uh, totally took out this cool machine thing and saved the universe this one point in time. Uh, and they would have like the names of the characters who were playing that that role be part of the lore of the story so the mmo players themselves could actually drive the story of the mmo that it it took a whole lot of work it was really really active development on their part unfortunately the game sucked and everyone left (laughs) but the way they built the story was so damn cool because you could actually if you played well enough if you were with the right people you could be written into a future update as a part of this world well, you see, that reminds me a lot of Eve, only it takes a lot more work because Eve does it perfectly where the lore is actually told by the players and not the game. That's true. That's also mm. that's another way of doing it. Um, we'll, we'll have to see where this ends up. Also, if you haven't seen the, the ending of The Matrix Online where they actually shut it down, mm-hmm. oh my God, it's amazing. Like they had the sky <laughs> turn into giant red eyeballs that would watch the player they had like weird matrix style glitches happen all over the place. They, they act like the matrix itself was breaking down and glitching <laughs> apart. And that's how the game ended is with that's the entire cool. world blowing up. <laughs> no shit. It was fucking that. That's awesome. actually really cool. That's the perfect way to do that. Yeah. It was so that's goddamn good. Like the, the safe, all right, it's all gone. Servers are down. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> the, the safe areas of the game were, um, you know, in, infiltrated by really high level characters. Um, if you want to see this happen to another game, uh, the original Final Fantasy fourteen, where they had to make a Realm Reborn because it was such shit. Um, mm-hmm. No Clip has a free documentary on YouTube. Just search No Clip Final Fantasy and you're sure to find it. Uh, where the Final Fantasy fourteen people for the original game actually shut it down in a very similar way. Uh, with big, uh, high-level creatures just wrecking through low-level towns. Um, mm-hmm. Really cool stuff. And they ended it with a beautiful amazing cinematic that destroys the world and then said hey you know we are bringing this mmo back it'll just be entirely different um, yeah but it's um, it's I cool have a, i have a couple points to make uh first off before we get too far off this mass effect writer joining anthem the guy's name is drew carpishan carpishan yes. so i do feel like we should have named him at some point <laughs> We're counting on There's you, that. Drew. We're counting Secondly, on you. Secondly, uh, if you haven't watched the Noclip documentaries, it's a really good YouTube channel with some really cool documentaries. Um, he's got agree. one. He's got a two-part series on Rocket League. He's got a bunch of stuff on the Doom remake where he talks about... Talk, they, he talks to the developers. They go through the process. Um, I think part of it, he talked to the sound designer, Mick Gordon of Doom. Yeah, really cool. Uh, there's one on The Witness, there's one on Spelunky, and the one they're, they're going to do, it's in the works, is The Witcher series, so that's a pretty cool one. So definitely give no clip a view. I am I'm seriously looking forward to The Witness one. So, mm-hmm. I mean, seriously, go. I'm, I'm posting this in the chat. Go check out no clip. They make stellar stuff, and they're, they're not commercialized at all. They're totally run by Patreon. So the people who want to see this stuff pay for it they say hey we want to do a store on spelunky you want to give us money and people just shower them with money 
So yeah, go go check that out. They're great, awesome producers. And with that, I think we're pretty much done for this week. Um, so everyone knows, stick around. Um, Adam's going to be bringing up a new stream with our community game this week, which is going to be Mount Your Friends. Come jump in our Discord. We'll post a fresh link in chat as well as down below. Um, just come hang out with us. Have a good time. We'll be in there for probably about an hour or so. And then by all means, everyone's loving it. Keep it going. Um, yeah. Awesome. Before we go, uh, special thanks to Fairmount for following during the cast. We don't have Streamlabs up when we cast because it might be kind of distracting, but we still want to make sure that we give those people recognition for following. So thanks. Yes, thank thanks you very much. Um, also, everyone, if you have game suggestions for this postcast stuff, tweet at us at, at 72 PC Podcast. If you think we suck at stuff, tweet at us at, at, at 72 PC Podcast. If you think we're the best damn thing ever, tweet at us at at 72 pc podcast <laughs> um you can always go to our youtube channel check out our stuff we try to clip some small tidbits out of our streams and also some game clips and stuff at our youtube channel at 72 and connector if you're there right now listening to this you should jump onto our twitch page at tv slash 72 pin connector on every saturday night at 9 p.m eastern to uh, watch this beautiful piece of art come to uh, come to life and uh, if you want a to go MP3 version for all of your podcast players, just hit up 72 pinconnector.com. You'll find our podcast RSS feed there. Or go through all of the apps that we support, such as uh, Google Jesus. Podcast, Stitcher, uh, Pocket Cast, all, yeah, all sorts of stuff. We've got a shit ton of stuff there. So odds are, you can, if you use an, an actual <laughs> podcasting app, you can probably find us on it. So, well, with that, until next week. Game on. <laughs> Bye. See you, everyone. <laughs>